Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And thank you so much for joining us live today. Today I have the special guest, AJ, a big, big friend. Welcome to the Influencer Growth Strategy. And today we're gonna talk about something amazing, which is how to find your titles and the description for your YouTube channel and for that, we have uh, someone that uh, has been in this road, has already running a very successful YouTube channel. So please, uh, can you introduce yourself and, and share with the audience about your channel, what you do, and what is the story behind, what motivates you to start this amazing YouTube channel that, uh, that you have created? Sure, thanks Harry, thanks. thanks a lot for having me first of all. Pleasure. Uh, and my channel is just came out of nowhere really. And it was a part of uh, one of the assignments I was given in the speaking uh, Toastmasters. Wow, really? <laughs> and wow. they said that, you know, create a podcast. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And I took it a little bit more seriously because I always had that in my mind that there are a lot of people in my network who has achieved great success and they have not told that to anybody. It's just that they're, they're great. And when I, whenever I talk to them, I feel like, you know, these lessons should go, uh, people should know how did they achieve what they had achieved. So I thought, you know, why not let's, if it my podcast, just not let it be me talking versus let's talk to somebody and interview them. And when I saw on YouTube, I was not, on, on no, I was not subscribing to any channel by then on YouTube. I had few here and there. But then I realized that there are a lot of people doing this kind of stuff, so that motivates motivated me even more. And that's it. I started my channel with, by interviewing some of the friends who I knew, uh, some of the entrepreneurs who are doing really good. So I kind of brought them in, spoke to them like we are talking right now here, and then just asked them about their journey. And it, it turns out that, and then the pandemic came, so I did like five, six epi episodes I did in person like this. Then pandemic came and I was like, oh, I can't do it anymore. So I waited for a month to pandemic to the lockdown to open, which never happened. Uh, we are talking 2019, mm -hmm. not 2020. Uh, so I then decided to reach out to people online. And guess what? Mm. That was the best thing that I did. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> because now my reach is global. I don't have to wait for people in London alone to come and you know join me in person. Now the sky is the limit. As many people you can find around the world who have so many different good messages. So I just yeah. really loved talking <laughs> to people. So sent invite to a lot of people i mean you can see on my channel some of the guests i'm really and have you, really I just, yeah <laughs> i just want to share with you guys the the channel uh, that um that ij has built and as you can see here right this is um most of the guests that uh, are part of of the channel so at the moment is 742 subscribers but the most interesting thing about this channel is that has almost close to 8,000 hours so what that means in terms of monetization in the future is that as soon as the channel reach the 1,000 subscribers straight away it will be qualified for monetize which is something very very good because even when the next pandemic happens even if you're not selling anything YouTube will pay you for people to watch your content. So even if people don't have money, it's still you can make an income. Uh, and this is a very, very good way to do it. I have to say that I love your tornadoes. They are amazing. Yes. And um, we're going to talk later on about a few good things that you have done in this channel. So which we want to share with the audience uh, the, the strategies and the secrets that you have uh, put in place in order to grow this channel. But first, I want to ask you something as fellow speaker, right? So there is something about becoming an influencer. And I know that uh, you're a great speaker. So my first question to you is, do you think that having the fear of public speaking on a stage fright can be a barrier for you to become an influencer or to create your YouTube channel? Or do you think that uh, that uh, this is have nothing to do the fear with the speaking we created to become an influencer 
so there's one of the guests on my show, uh, Harry was just showing, his name is Eric Gates, and he, he is so good public speaker, he's wow. amazing. And his, his video is actually one of the most watched video on my channel. Wow. And he talks about public speaking. Mm -hmm. Now, and what he says and what I completely, completely agree is that public speaking is the number one skill that you need to have, you need to master, you need to own that skill. Because once you are, you've got rid of all the fear of speaking in public, sky is the limit. You can do so millions of things. Yeah. This, the, the channel that I did on YouTube, I already had spoken quite a lot in Harry. Oh yeah, you know it, right? I saw you several and, times, and I didn't know that I, I could be a speaker because it all happened as an accident. I went on stage in my company where I was working. They were running wow. some event. I just did a speech, and people said, "Oh, we'll do it one more." And so people sort of kind of liked it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did one more and one more, and then I joined this club, Toastmaster Club. Mm -hmm. I did whoa, so many speeches, and I was so fortunate to win so many awards in the contests. Mm -hmm. Nearly more than a dozen awards I got, mm -hmm. fortunately. So somehow I always thought, you know, there is nothing I have that I can give to people, but people didn't think like that. Mm -hmm. And that was a kind of surprise to me. I was always in this imposter syndrome, you know. What yeah. do I have to give to people? Yeah, yeah, who, who exactly. Yeah. This has happened very common to, to all of us, like, who am I? But the thing, I think that uh, your channel has been an example and an inspiration, right? And this is the second question, the question, second question that I want to ask you is when it comes to public speaking, right? Um, I think that you grow in this audience in your channel. It is because the people more than motivated, they are inspired about your content, right? They are inspired about what they are listening, by how you conduct in the interviews. And so it's not enough to have um, to overcome the fear of public speaking. So uh, when you speak, how you can develop these skills that you speak and influence and motivate your audience, either on the stage, on your channel. So you have a try that people follow your content. I always said that motivation, the people get motivated and demotivated again. But if they are inspired, it's when they subscribe, when they follow you. So um, how has been your transition from overcoming the fear of public speaking, becoming a, a, overcoming the fear of public speaking and, and become a speaker? On to the point that you are now, that you are actually motivational speaker, inspiring speaker, and the proof is that you are growing the following in your channel, right? So, what better uh, social proof than that? Not only the following, but also the hours of that, um, the, the engagement. The engagement in your channel is just incredible. How uh, people spend time watching your videos. So, what do you think is the secret behind? I think. It, as we know, it all started with speaking, coming on stage and you know, just giving speeches. And that was the first micro step, I would say. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of creating a channel, it just happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of going to speaking contests really, it just mm -hmm. happened because I was into that kind of environment. So I think the main thing that I would ask everybody to focus on is to take that small step. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when it comes to speaking, there is only one thing and one thing only that can improve your speaking skills and that is to speak. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you can read a lot of stuff, you can watch a lot of videos about uh, speaking, yeah. but it won't help until <laughs> you go on the stage, get comfortable being uncomfortable and you know, let your voice be heard. And that's the only thing that will improve. I know, I mean, I, English is not my native language. And yeah, neither, my <laughs> neither yours. <laughs> uh, but you just go and you speak. You will make, uh, you will mess. Yeah, I always share. times, I just always, fine. You yeah. feel embarrassed? <laughs> oh, what did I do? I always share with everyone, like, a public speaking and leadership, right? It's a skill. It's a skill base. So basically, it's like driving a car, riding a bicycle. So the more you practice, the better you become. Yeah. So by practicing, you want to become an amazing motivational and inspirational speaker and YouTube influencer. Practicing is what's going to make you better. Yeah, I think. And, and there's, I don't know who said it, Mark Twain or somebody, that there are, I don't know who said it, but there are only three versions of any speech. One is that you 
prepared and <laughs> you, you thought that you should have you should you will give and one speech is what you give and one speech is wish you would have given <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> and they are not the same every time for everybody mm. uh, even if you're polished speaker mm. at the end of your speech you will feel like oh i should have done that and then mm. i should have said that instead of that i would have given that example for example mm. so it does happen so there is there's no perfection although you will polish when you will come on stage and coming on to another question about how did i become motivational speaker i don't call myself a motivational <laughs> speaker yet but thanks for saying that <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> feeling honored <laughs> but it's just that you know i find motivation in anything mm-hmm. really anything you go out open your door and you look around you will find motivation everywhere you can get motivated from the leaves you can get motivated from the trees from the roads from anything really Yeah I mean it's just that you can create your own story and link it you know why this particular thing why say for example leaves I give example you go and look at the leaves the leaves have its own life cycle they grow they are small they are very fragile very vulnerable they can break but then when they grow and then they create fruits and stuff like that and they have a life cycle right so there is there is some learning from that life cycle you know mm-hmm. so it could be anything it's like finding story so what i do is i don't really give motivational speeches but all the speeches that you've heard from me they most like their motivational exactly. speeches <laughs> so it just happened by accident so yeah i tell you what more than by accident is like because you have this way of being right you project that right and um um the most important is to be authentic as a motivational speaker mm. and and to be yourself right a lot of people uh, want to be like Tony Robbins want to be like Les Brown and they forgot how to be themselves right and there is when they lose themselves as a speaker as a motivational speaker right by by you being yourself by you staying happy by you staying positive by you be motivating yourself because how are you, how you going to motivate others if you're demotivating yourself right so all that goes into the context of, of your channel of the world that you excellent work that you're doing in youtube and that's why it's projected so the audience is like like i call it touch move and inspire by that right so uh, i want to ask you one more question before we uh, share some secrets to the audience right we have uh, today we're gonna share some secrets to you for, to you how to find your titles and the description for your videos but before that i want to ask uh, the first question so what is your advice for the people that they are just watching this video and they are thinking to start the youtube channel and they are thinking this is difficult uh is very competitive who am i for start a youtube channel um this is work for other people it doesn't work for me i'm not really an influencer so people that really want to create something amazing in, in youtube but um what would be your advice to them three words okay <laughs> just do it exactly you know you just create whatever you can create it doesn't matter how good it is how bad it is you create it there's right? a lot of people are just pondering about oh i will start i have a lot of stuff i have to read something before um, i start they they never start yeah you you will have to start somewhere it's it's like you're not going to go and give a motivational speech to tony robbins uh-huh. you don't need to exactly. he's not your audience he's not yeah. your audience but you still have it's a 7 billion or 8 billion population that we have you will still find some hundreds of thousands of people who know less than you and are interested in the topic that you're talking about and they will join you exactly and then the it, yeah that's the other thing as well the people they will um they, they will um they're not inspired or motivated right you don't need, you're not doing your talk for Tony Robbins or for this big motivational speaker you're doing for the people that want to learn from you right so this is important so there is i always said there is always an expert in everybody's an expert in something right and then so now we let's share some secrets right before we were talking about strategies how uh, you can grow uh, the youtube channel so i want to share your channel with with uh with the audience and if you can share with them right um what would be your main uh, strategy or secrets to to find specifically 
the titles and the description of your videos, right? So what what do you when you have a guess, right? How you create those titles? Right. So my my approach is a little bit different because uh -huh. my channel was my idea was not to you know create a YouTube channel and start making <laughs> money out of it. That was not <laughs> that was not the initial idea, right? Yeah. So my motivation and it, it is still this case. My motivation exactly. is not to make it and monetize it and get money out of it and those kind of, I mean that will happen of course well it's uh, about to happen very soon <laughs> yeah but my idea was to talk to the people who have something to share exactly and, yeah so most of my videos except for first four or five everybody has written a bestseller almost very and good the, the most recent one that you see right now is Joe Foster he has written a book and he's a founder of Reebok the shoe company ah. <laughs> so he's, he's a big shot he's achieved quite a lot he has a good journey I read his book and then I interviewed him so, so those kind of lessons he is writing a book because he wants people to know about it and I'm just becoming a part of that uh, his uh, uh, journey exactly. really. and all the other people that you see they have written one or two or uh, some of them have written like dozens of books out of which tens, ten have been bestsellers. So, so it's really sharing the messages of people to the world, really, to the people who exactly. want to learn. So, with regards to your question about titles and thumbnails and everything, of course, I did a lot of research and I know about how YouTube works, how your stuff is being shown to other people, mm -hmm. but. How I started, I find a guest in the topic of my interest, which is productivity. So if you see on my channel, most of them are either public speaking or productivity related uh, videos. Excellent. So these are the people who have written on those topics. So I find their work, I do study them, I do read their books. Everybody you see, I've read their books. Right. Excellent. <laughs> that has really helped that, That's very good. <laughs> reading speed and stuff. but. <laughs> But when I read them, I feel like you know I want to talk to them. I want to talk, ask them the questions that they've not written in the book. And then I talk to them, do the interviews, and then comes this uh, how to set up your title and thumbnail and stuff. So say for example, I am talking to let's say that becoming a master storyteller, I at least uh, that video that I did is called some. Hmm. From YouTube's terms, it's nothing, but still thousands for for somebody who's. I just started, right? And it's because then you're doing fantastic. So what I did in this particular video, it's getting quite a lot of views, views every day now. And what I did in this is, I kind of saw his popular videos, and I tried to capture some keywords from it, right? Mm -hmm. Which are related to my videos. I'm like, I can't, I don't advise people to control C and control V because mm -hmm. YouTube. You cannot do it, it. yeah. Uh, but you see some nice keywords about that person and use them in your video and link it to their trending videos so when people are watching their trending videos which have like millions of views then your video is showing on the side in the youtube sidebar and then people are tend to click on it or in some cases it's the next video if you have auto play on so it comes like this and then if somebody is asking a specific question so with regards to keywords i go for questions you know what kind of questions how to for example, most of my videos like how to how to become exactly how to, how this to is be more productive, how to be a good storyteller, how to become high performance using peak performance, uh, how to achieve performance using spirituality, for example. I think your titles are great. I think that all the titles because when you go to YouTube, this is what uh, what we all have to share, right? Mm -hmm. When we go to YouTube, the um, uh, when you type. You type how to solve the problem, right? Yeah. So it's very good to type your videos, the title about what would you will be typing if you if you have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, how to use body language effectively and not verbal, right? So people, this is sound like somebody will type that in YouTube or how to become a disruptive entrepreneur, right? It, this these are, are keywords that a people will type naturally and that's why if you create a video and you title that right then what happened is the you have a very good uh, advantage because you have more chance to be seen right yeah yeah and there's one caveat to that is when you are searching for keywords feel free to use uh, TubeBuddy or uh, VidIQ kind of tools because they give you a very good idea of if your keyword is good because even if you are taking a long keyword and if there are 
if your video is not ranking onto it then it's of no use or I mean your video will show somewhere in, uh, on fifth page of the search results yeah um, so that might not be very useful so in that case can I continue yeah, yeah, go, go. yeah. Hmm. so in that case in TubeBuddy you go and find what keywords have been searched and mm -hmm. so the TubeBuddy gives you a score it's like it's go to very good extremely good those kind of keywords and it tells you search profit search traffic and so you check how much is traffic on that particular keyword there might be some keywords say for example olympics 2020 olympics mm -hmm. that, that keyword might be very hot two months ago one month ago when olympics were going on but not today so exactly. not today it will be paralympic Example, mm -hmm. right so you check in TubeBuddy TubeBuddy will tell you that this is currently trending and if you do use it then it will tell you a score that it's good for you your video may have some chances to pop up people will see so yeah use use those kind of tricks and uh, when you have plugins installed for TubeBuddy and uh, so they will also show you the keywords have been used by other people so if you're watching a similar video then TubeBuddy will show you what kind of keywords they have used so you can see that these are the keywords that have been used and if they relate to your content then feel free to use them exactly and it's not like if somebody's uh, um, let's say it, they can they are using these keywords because it's working right yeah 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 so take take the common keywords it's not like if somebody has used tony robbins as a keyword and your topic is the same but you didn't speak about tony robbins and don't use it <laughs> exactly <laughs> because uh, because youtube also does uh, convert your speech into text and they know what you have spoken during the video youtube knows it even if you write it or not even if you write it in a description or not youtube translates your voice into speech proper uh, word file or something mm -hmm. I don't know. subtitles they create their automatic subtitles and they will be very easily find out that this video talks nothing about Tony Robbins, but they're using them as a keyword, so it'll be like use useless. <laughs> so yeah, and there are there are so many trips and tricks. Keep your uh, titles shorter, like seventy words, seventy. Yeah, we were talking about like this. Yeah. Like you know, try to find the titles not to short, and not too not too short because uh, why it would be very competitive, mm -hmm. right? Uh, would be better to have a long title and the. Um, in, in future videos, we are going to share with you guys how to use this TubeBuddy uh, tool uh, effectively, how to, uh, uh, to, to see what is trending and what is um, uh, more competitive and, le and less competitive. But the great question that I have for you, right, is um, like you say, for example, everybody that you interview in your show, the rule number one is you read the book, right? And then if you like the book, then uh, you interview them to your channel. Is that correct? Well, the chances are that I'm going to like their books because I've already, <laughs> I've already approached them and they have said yes in some cases. So. Oh, very good. So first they saying yes and then you read the book. Some it's about some of the, my guests were really renowned, so I have read their books. <laughs> They're very anyway. famous, yeah. <laughs> They're very famous, so I've read their books before even I sent them an invitation to come on the, on the show. But if I have not, then when they say yes, my first thing is to buy their Kindle version book of whatever possible, and then read uh, as much possible. So most most cases I do read cover to cover before I talk to them. And the idea is to keep the content a little bit fresh, not asking the questions that everybody has asked them online. Um, so give some novelty to to this. So yeah, the, the purpose is to you know get the nuggets from them because they have they have experienced quite a lot, and that's why they are writing books. And when they are writing books, then mm -hmm. tell us something more than exactly. what you have written. So that's the and this idea. is very good strategy. Like you know, for all of you that are watching here. Remember, if you have a guest for the interview, check it hasn't been interviewed before and check what type of question people are asking before. And please don't ask the same thing, right? I always said about uh, for all of you that are watching now, you want to start your journey in YouTube, right? Become an interviewer is a very good way to start because um, you can expand your seeker of influence uh, uh, really fast, right? You can have a lot of guests to speak on your channel, and def that definitely will contribute to your growth, right? Yeah. And also to expand your network as well, because 
uh, at the end of the day you have a network now of authors that um, that um, that is very valuable they add value to your channel and also it's a lot of learning like I said I'm impressed how much engagement you have from from the channel right it's amazing the amount of hours that uh, that people are watching the the interviews people are listening to the authors right mm. so my other question is do you apart from the authors um, do you have any new strategy for the channel or you will continue talking about a uh, specific about productivity and all the authors that have been written about productivity right yeah so it has even even that topic I didn't select ah you didn't select so tell me what happened about that what happened by accident <laughs> it just happened by accident so I started Very talking good. to people of, of course public speaking was okay my area of interest. Speaking. so some of the guests have uh, public speaking public skills. speaking body language and those kind of things but when I found somebody I happen to like people who talk about productivity, about how to use your brain effectively, how to use your days, how to make the most of your time and and how to be a peak performer, those kind of things. So it just happened by chance. Uh, but now, even when I, I reach out to the authors, they have written something related to productivity or your brain health or something related. And that's activity. fantastic. So it just by accident, really, and I really enjoyed it. And about the about how you learn, right? So when I started talking to people, I didn't think that I'm going to do my own videos also. But I tried it. I did a couple of videos only me talking, and it looks like they are also very popular. I have watched. I've seen them myself. They are very very good. Yeah, they, so they, they look got... amazing in camera. Very powerful. I saw them myself. They're fantastic. So I, I'm going to do it. When you're talking about changing strategy, I would have more content of my own. Um, so I'll continue to do that. Yeah, adding, adding yeah. the strategy, right? But I think that the, um, I think that um, when it comes to to the channels itself, right? You can have different categories, right? So this category that you have now interviewing authors in productivity books, very strong category already in your channel, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very solid, a lot of interviews, a lot of quality uh, content there, right? So again, yes, you can. Um, now open another category, right? Very strong in the channel. Regarding uh, in terms, uh, yeah, where you produce the content yeah, yeah, yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So then the, this both categories can empower themselves, right? You can talk about uh, your views in productivity, and also open another topic, right? Uh, it could be about business growth, right? It could be about uh, another thing that you're passionate about, right? And little by little, you mix the productivity with, with that topic, little by little, merge them together, and until the point that they can separate, until the second becomes strong. I think that still, obviously, um, I think that, that the strategy to interview in author on productivity uh, is fantastic. I actually want to introduce you a couple of our authors that they have wrote uh, books in productivity so you can <laughs> interview them as well so even ourselves we, we have in our book publishing company two authors that already wrote in productivity right the productivity coach so that would be suitable for for the channel right sure. so this strategy obviously is working fantastic uh, and the proof is, is in the hours of, of engagement right and then what we're talking today one last question is about the description so the description of the videos i want to go back to the channel again so what would be the um uh so if you the, if you open let's say open the first video the, okay the, the first one this one, one. Yeah, yeah. So okay so we got to see oh, I'm, I'm very good this. To adults, so, so let's go down scroll down a little bit and uh, show more and uh, what should down? No, no, in the description. Description. So show more. Yes. Up, up, up. up. Mm. Yeah. Ah, there you go. The description. So what I do in my description is the first two, three lines should be more or less capturing your main keywords. Main keywords, right? Yeah. And uh, what exactly is in this video? What? Uh, and and then you very direct to the point, right? Yeah, and then you talk about the guest. Maybe it's like the guest intro, so that people know who we are talking. What is the authority to talk about this subject? 
and this is one very important thing timeline of the interview I I highly recommend if your video is long so if you have like five minutes video it's okay you don't need to have it because you know what's your topic and you want to talk about that for four, five minutes but if it's a if it's a 50 minutes say for example this one is 50 minute video so I've put timeline and what Google does is sorry YouTube does is it puts the links so you click on the link and then you go directly on to uh, say for example this is the big rituals I'm talking about so well, it is fantastic so this one jumps directly onto that I'm wearing the same t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> so, so it jumps onto that and not only that when somebody is searching in Google this mm. particular string so like nobody will be searching Eric explains but they will say how to tell, uh, how exactly. to tell focus using stories right or for impact of the current COVID-19 on speaking industry for example so people might search for this string and this is a kind of keyword which uh, will help you Google will YouTube will say okay in this particular video at this place somebody has spoken so you might have seen the Google YouTube searches it tells you the timelines mm -hmm. so I think if you put these timelines in longer videos it's really helpful it would be very helpful yeah mm -hmm. excellent so if one uh, last question, and this one it goes to to you that you are uh, in the in in your seat right now, right? And you're thinking, well, should I really go for it? My question to you is, uh, since you start this journey, right? Um, what do you think? It has been tough. It has been difficult. It has been hard, or or is totally worth it? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> it has been challenging, yeah? Oh, definitely. I mean, you, <laughs> all of it, yeah. <laughs> you will see a lot of times um, the, the guests, especially, and I feel privileged to have them on, on the show, but I didn't believe that they would come and talk to me. I'm just being. Exactly, front, but, yeah. So that's the great thing. I yeah. still reached out and. And people start to say yes, right? Yeah, but it's it's a number game. I do reach out to exactly. a lot of people, and a lot of people. And it's time consuming because you need to read about them first. What do they do? Uh, but not reading everybody's book, but you at least know that this is my potential uh, guest. And then you make a list, which is a big list, and then you send the emails to each of them individually so that they know that you're not just bulk sending emails. <laughs> <laughs> and, so uh, it has to be personalized, right? Yeah, and then out of out of 20 emails, maybe you get one year. So out of 30 emails, you get one year. So that's a lot of work. So it's not it's not easy, it's tough. Sometimes when you get zero responses, then you <laughs> <say, "Well." laughs> but but when, when, when you talk to these people, it is totally worth it. It's totally worth the effort. And, and it, has, it has changed. Uh, my own thinking I've learned a lot from the people I've spoken to um, so yeah it's welcome definitely... welcome we say you have the founder of rebook speaking your channel so oh. what a what a what a, a uh, <laughs> what a privilege right multi-million every single person in the world knows this brand and and the person has been so kind to go on and speak in, in your channel and this is what is uh, we're talking a little bit about limiting belief we all have limiting belief like for example you thought no uh, why these people would talk to me, right? Mm. Who am I to these people? Well, so uh, the you, my friend, has made the impossible possible, right? And, and little by little, several best-selling authors um, has already spoken in your channel, well known with very powerful books, and not even that, even like I said, your last interview is with the founder of of, of Reboot. So. I just want to congratulate you for Thank all you. the job the, from YouTuber to YouTuber. Fantastic <laughs> job you. that you're doing. Amazing. And uh, keep growing. We will love to have you back uh, at some point to tell us more about the channel, more about the progress, more about the new strategy. We want to know what is working, what is not working, what, uh, because what, what uh, you want to do different, what you want to experiment. And like this, we. Uh, we see the progress of your channel here from Influencer Growth Strategies. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. And I stay here every Sunday in Influencer Growth Strategy with secrets and tips how YouTube can become an influencer and start to grow your YouTube channel. Bye for now. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Harry. Pleasure, Thanks. pleasure.